Welcome to Life Church Fanania. It is a pleasure to be with you and thank you for allowing us into your home. We're your hosts for the day. I'm Ian. And I'm Eleanor. And we want to uh, encourage you to lift up your hearts in worship. Let's begin with prayer. Father, we come and uh, our desire is that we would acknowledge you to know that you, the Holy One, are worthy of all praise. And we want to give you that from the depths of our heart by prayer, in Jesus' name, and in song. Holy, holy, holy. Yes, indeed. He is worthy to be praised. This next song echoes that same theme that our Lord God is so worthy of every praise of every breath. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Holy One, He sacrificed His life. 
praise you, Lord. We want to certainly do that. Give you our praise. Now, what do we need to be aware of? Coming up tomorrow night, please be in prayer for your church council. There's always important things that need to be discussed and decided. Then on Wednesday, you've got the opportunity to come together physically for our Bible study when we'll use the Go Deeper sheets as our starting point. We didn't get a chance to pack our own uh, Operation Christmas Child boxes this year, but many of us uh, donated so that it could be done anyway. What happens? How did all this come about? Here's a quick overview. Back in 1993, uh, the Operation Christmas Child uh, program kicked off, and it was a great success then, and it's been a great success since. And you can see that there have been 178 million children in more than 150 countries have received a Christmas gift. And it's followed up not only with a gift, but there's a whole program that goes around that. This is a shot of the uh, warehouse where those boxes are, are being packed and stored and prepared for shipping. The boxes go into bigger cartons they are checked for the suitability of um, that they, they meet the requirements and these are often legal requirements for getting into countries and volunteers uh, sort and pack and reload and then they're shipped out and here are some uh, cartons full of boxes ready to be transferred overseas and this gives us a little glimpse that there's preparation that goes on in these receiving countries long before the shoe boxes arrived. And then there's follow up material. So it's not just give a gift and walk away, but prepare the communities and then follow up every one of those children with an opportunity to learn more. And so kids around the world are receiving wonderful presents to brighten up their Christmas and learn what Christmas is and to celebrate Jesus. Here's an example of what goes into one of the donated shoe boxes uh, and it's squeezed into a box. Likewise, here's some other things that are suitable to go into your next year's Christmas uh, box and it's squeezed into a little box and then boys and girls around the world uh, are part of communities that are learning about who Jesus is, how good he is, and how he transforms lives and communities as well. What a great program to be part of. Uh, there are many ways in which we can use our finances wisely. We want to uh, thank those of you who have uh, continued to support the mission and ministry of Life Church Panania, uh, both directly and in our specific mission uh, partners in Myanmar. Nothing happens without prayer. So would, would you bow and let me lead you uh, through a brief prayer. Our Father, we bow in your presence, confident that you hear us and you are holy. Your name is holy. You are holy and you're to be honoured and praised. We do it in song, but we do it from the depths of our heart as best as we are able as fallen human beings. Redeemed by your name, thank you for what you've done for us. And we want to not only celebrate who you are, but live out who you are through our lives, through our words, through our deeds, through our relationships, so that your kingdom comes into our lives and then fills us up and overflows out of our lives so that we can be your difference in the world. We are so limited and so needy. We are utterly dependent on you. Uh, our cry is give us our daily bread. Give us what we need to be able to live out the life of Christ every single day. But begin by forgiving us all the ways in which we have failed, sinned and messed up. Lord, you are gracious and we utterly depend on you to forgive us, cleanse us, restore and renew us that we might be the clean vessels through which you are able to flow. And out of that, 
We are confident that glory will come to you and not to us, that you will work in spite of us, that you will do great things and it will be in our frailty that you are most glorified. So we honour you, praise you and lift up your name through Jesus our Lord. Amen. And now we want to again turn prayer into song. Let your kingdom come. Let it come into us and then let it come through us. Let your kingdom come. Amen. Lord, your kingdom come. And how do we do that? This connects with our Bible reading that is about to happen. We are salt and we are light. And just a little bit can make a big difference. We are salt and light. Oh 
Lord, that's our prayer. Make us salt. Make us light. And so we turn now to God's word. We open up scripture at the end of Luke chapter 14. Hear the word of the Lord. Salt is good, but if the salt loses its savour, with what will it be seasoned? It is fit neither for the soil nor for fertiliser, and it is thrown out. The one who has ears to hear, let him hear. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want to set my life on a better course through life. Don't you? Well, we can. And here is how. Jesus often warned his disciples against the leaven of the Pharisees. Leaven means yeast that puffs up the bread. Uh, again and again, he warned them. And we sort of get what he was talking about when he warned against the Pharisees and the leaven of the Pharisees. Well, in today's text here in the end of Luke 14, Jesus goes back into the kitchen and he talks about salt. And we sort of get the idea of what he wants us to hear. But if we're really going to understand what Jesus is trying to tell us, then we need to read the Bible like Jesus reads the Bible. Not many people even read Leviticus, uh, let alone have any idea what to do when they do read what's there. Well, we are about to reveal some of the mysteries of this book. It says, No grain offering that you present to the Lord may be made with leaven, for you are not to burn any leaven as an offering made by fire to the Lord. So when Jesus says, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, he's referencing all the way back to the book of Leviticus. Jesus is saying, beware of what the Pharisees are doing because it's not acceptable to God. You shall, uh, you shall season each of your grain offerings with salt. You must not leave out the salt of the covenant of your God from your grain offerings. You are to add salt to each of your offerings. So here, this is exactly the same passage as the leaven. And when Jesus talks about salt, he's referencing this text. It's your symbolic salt that must be part of what makes everything you do acceptable to God. So let's try and pull that together in broad terms. Leaven is a symbol for sin and salt is a symbol for holiness. Now, this does not mean that leaven, yeast, is bad. Quite the contrary. The same scripture in Leviticus goes on to specify that leaven is one of the tithes that are to be wrought as an offering. What this does mean in the Old Testament is that there is a rich symbolism and it uses leaven as a symbol for sin. And this is where, it's, where it connects with today's text in Luke 14. Salt is also a symbol, but it's a symbol of holiness. So we're going to take what we learned from the Old Testament and use it to help explain the symbolism of the New Testament. And knowing the Old Testament symbol, then applying it to Jesus' New Testament teaching enables us to set a better course through life today. How do we do that? We start with holiness. It's about salt, a symbol for holiness. If we're going to start this better journey, it begins with holiness. Jesus opens this up by a, a blanket statement. Salt is good. He's talked about salt in other places as well. He's said of you and me, you are the salt of the earth. So we are supposed to be good. How, how are we good? Well, first up, I'm to add good. The first purpose of salt is to enhance the flavors that are there. I am here to make this world a better place. I'm here to bring peace to the troubled. I'm here to bring joy to the downcast, to give grace to the needy, to bestow love on the neglected, and to bring Jesus to everyone. I am to add good, permeated through everything that I ever do. On an early occasion, Jesus said, salt is good, but if the salt loses its saltiness, 
with what will you season it? Have salt inside yourselves. This was about six months earlier. It seems that Jesus reused all his best material. You have already got the salt inside you. You're a believer. You've got the Holy Spirit, and that's where your holiness originates from. So don't be afraid to sprinkle a little holiness around. That's what you're here for. That's the first thing. I'm also here to remove that which is bad. Now, don't be distressed. This is not a real injury. This is one of those novelty gags you get in show bags, and it just slides on and off over your finger. But it does illustrate that I am to remove that which is bad. In, in fact, we read elsewhere in Scripture, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is what we're to be doing. We're to be adding that which is good into our lives and into the lives of those around us. That's how we overcome evil, by adding good. So I begin with holiness, and then if I'm going to make any progress in my life, if I'm going to develop and mature and grow to be all that I can possibly be, then holiness is what I need so that I can grow. Again, the work of the Holy Spirit within is going to help that happen. Jesus goes on to say, salt is good, but if the salt loses its savour, with what will it be seasoned? Back in Jesus' day, salt was almost exclusively obtained from salt mines. They would dig into the, the veins of salt that were in the sides of hills, and this is a salt mine. And sometimes they would wash, redirect streams and wash the, the salt out of the mines and settled in ponds just like this so that the salt water then evaporates and you're left with salt behind. On warm seashores, you can direct the um, high tide in, it evaporates and eventually you can start collecting all the salt. In many places, there are vast salt lakes just like this, and people gather and collect the salt. Very popular these days is uh, Himalayan pink salt. Now, the pink is not there to make it pretty, although it does. The salt is actually impurities that are mixed in with the salt. It hasn't been purified the way that your white salt uh, has been purified. So Jesus warns, if the salt loses its savour, what, what does he talk about when he uh, loses its savour? Partly it's the, um, the pinkness, the impurities that are there. This word loses its savour actually comes to us from the concept of a, a tool or a weapon or some instrument, and it is with, means without a sharp edge. So losing its savour is to lose your edge to become just a blunt instrument. When you take that same concept and you use that word in the kitchen, uh, it means uh, insipid or tasteless or bland or lacking flavour. And you can see how uh, this one concept, the one word, is uh, savourless, is used in both contexts of workshop and the kitchen. And then the same word, the same Greek word, is also the root for our English words, moron or moronic. And it's also the root of our Australian term, not the sharpest tool in the shed. It all is about losing savour. Now, as a believer, you don't want to lose your edge. You want to stay sharp and keen. You, you grow spiritually sharp so that you can cut through the rubbish that the world throws at you. We need to stay sharp. And that means we need to stay holy. How does that happen? Well, I'm only good if I am undiluted. I've got to avoid being watered down. 
Now, for example, you know, you're sitting down for dinner. You do not pour a cup of salt water on your dinner. You want your salt undiluted in little crystals. Weak and watery salt is not good for your dinner. And in the same way, weak, watered down Christians are not pleasant and they're no good either. We're not to be diluted. We're to stay salty and stay holy. So how do I avoid being diluted? It comes from being disciplined. And the word disciples and the word discipline go together. We are to choose to be salty. We are to choose to stay sharp. We are to choose to be holy. Now, you want your chocolate milkshake served cold. Not with the milk at room temperature. That would not be so pleasant. And you want your hot chocolate served hot. Jesus complains, you are neither cold nor hot. How I wish you were one or the other. So because you are tepid and neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out. It means let go of your fear. Be who you truly are. Don't be half-hearted. Don't be wishy-washy. Don't be lukewarm. Instead, we need to be open and committed about this course that you are plotting through life. A, admit who you now are. That's how you got to be saved in the first place. You admitted you're a sinner. Now admit you're a saint. Admit that you're on a path of holiness. B, believe it to be true because it is true and commit. Commit to traveling this better course through life. Don't water yourself down. Don't dilute yourself. Commit to it. And not only are we to be undiluted, we're to be unpolluted as well. Now, look, I do not want to swim at this beach. Who would? Pollution is discouraging and ruins every experience, including the Christian experience. Don't let sin or anything else pollute you. Instead, we need to be directed. The better course through life has direction, and that direction is ever towards Christ-likeness. Keep on going. Keep on growing. Keep on developing. Stay sharp. And you'll do that as you open up God's word and allow him to speak his life into your life so that you can have a better path through life. You've already got it in you already. Your blood, your sweat and your tears are all salty. You've got it. And you, you have the salt within yourself. So live out who you truly are. Live it out through your blood. Live it out through your sweat. Live it out through your tears. Be holy. So we begin with holiness. We progress with holiness. And we finish with holiness. It is the only game in town. This is what it's all about. If you want a course through life, that's the best course. It will be the course of holiness. As we get towards the end of the passage, Jesus warns, look, if you're not that, you're fit neither for the soil nor fertilizer, and you're just thrown out. If you're diluted and watery, if you're polluted and allow the world to get in, you will not finish strong. But I want to finish strong, and I don't want to miss out. I don't want to be thrown out. If you get to be diluted or polluted, you will miss out on abundant life. You will just struggle through and it, it won't be as much fun and it won't be as much dynamic uh, excitement as you would like your life to be. So don't miss out on abundant life. Don't be diluted. Don't be polluted. And in fact, there's a question mark. You may even miss out on eternal life altogether because if you're not pursuing this pathway, where is the guarantee that you were even saved in the first place? So make sure you get saved and you stay the course. A, B, C. Admit you're a sinner. Believe Jesus can do it for you because he has done. And then commit. 
commit to walking this pathway of eternal life that grows into abundant life. And then, no time to develop this here, but in our uh, Go Deeper study notes, you can talk out this. You may even miss out on physical life. You're, you're just robbing yourself of every form of life in all its abundance and all its fullness in all its breadth and depth in every way you miss out if you are diluted or polluted instead live out who you now truly are and jesus ends by saying the one who has ears to hear let him hear are you getting this are you understanding that holiness has been right through scripture from the very start of the old testament right through the new testament and up to today listen to this finish strong and finish strong with others let your speech always be gracious what does that mean seasoned with salt what season mean to be arranged be flavorsome be delightful Add to what is being said. Say something that's full of grace. It's the work of the Holy Spirit within you. It, it talks of your own blood, sweat and tears. Share what you've got and do it full of grace. And finish strong not only with others, but finish strong with God. Just as he who called you is holy. So be holy in all that you do because it's written be holy because i the lord am holy i want to finish strong i desire to finish strong i commit to finishing strong i want my life to count for something and i don't have to do great deeds i just have to be full of grace salty flavorsome adding delight where I go and how do you do that it's simple set a better course through life keep on fine-tuning your course so that you are going with Jesus and so we respond to what we learn out of Scripture and our prayer is a song revive us O Lord
Amen. That is our prayer. Revive us. Keep on reviving us, Lord. We are the salt of the earth, and so we desire to be holy. Lord, that's our prayer. Lord, you've made us salt. We are salty. May who we are, what we say, and what we do bring honor to you and blessing to those all around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Please let people know that you went to church today and it was great and they can come too. Uh, You might even like to invite them to sit with you and and watch either this or one of the other uh, videos again. And until we are able to meet with you somewhere sometime, we hope that you're able to come and join us or tune in next week online. God bless.